Hello and welcome back to Empyrean Galactic Survival. Welcome back to Reforged Eden. My name is Spange. Uh, right, today is going to be a bit of a grindy episode. Uh, normally I'd sort of cut a lot of this out, but I'm a bit behind on videos, so suck it. You're going to have to deal with the grindiness. You're going to have to join me while I grind the living bejesus out of this game. Uh, first up is a visit to the UCH because we've got a load of data pads and navigation data and uh, I want some unlock points basically. We've got like 17 data pads so that's like you know a good 1700 trading points. Uh, uh, unlock points sorry. Also we can do the thing that I completely neglected to do for so long now but now I'm remembering to do it. Research. And look, research points. Bingo. That's uh, three hours, and then I can do that again. Uh, that has given me, oh yeah, nearly two thousand unlock points. That's pretty decent, right? We should be able to now unlock the last of the hydroponic bays that I want, which is that one, because I don't really see the point in plant protein or berries. You might as well just use vegetables, spice, mushroom sweetener. Don't really need buds. I thought buds were removed. Anyway, no buds, I guess. Um, Grains, fruit, herbal leaves. Yeah, need all of that. So the only one that I probably shouldn't have spent any points on is buds. But never mind. These things happen. Um, so that's cool. We got a load of upgrade points left over. Which means I can start looking into the system upgrades tree. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, but this is good, because uh, now we can sort of think about unlocking some of the heavier turrets um, that are going to do more... Look at this heavy laser turret. Doesn't that look bad? Ass! Um, yeah, it looks pretty pretty cool. I want some of them on the Ayamara. Uh, this is going to take a little while, but uh, the unlock points, I think, yeah, that's five, that's ten. So, you know, they're not a huge amount. Let's see if we can go through it now, actually. Uh, because... One of the things that I do want to play around with are these badges. Oh, yes. I'm going to slap some of these <laughs> onto an SV, I think. I'm not sure if the far SV will take them. Uh, they are a ton. Uh, they're 982 kilograms. My God. That's just a torpedo. <laughs> the launcher itself. How heavy is that? Uh, one point, well, it's basically two tons. Two tons? Wow. And then a ton per torpedo. Okay, so basically you need something that is, uh, has a lot of engines and very lightweight. It, it needs to be a torpedo runner. And that's 8,500 torpedo. Anyway, the point is, I want to slap it on and see what it does to, I know, I know, a bandit, see if he or something, you know, something hilarious. Uh, so we'll have a little go at that at some point. Right, and then we got heavy gat turrets. These are all 10... Ten. I just want to make sure I'm not burning through my points unnecessarily, but I do need to unlock pretty much everything. The hell dart missiles, the flak, the heavy missile turrets, the type D laser charges. Because in order to get the CV turrets at the end, which is the ones I want, they're at the end of the damn tree. Revian, you bugger. I have to unlock everything. Anyway, we've got plenty of points left, so we're, we're doing well. Ballistic artillery, heavy artillery hit. Heavy artillery, and uh, that unlocks the... Um... Wait, did that unlock the ammo? Did I need to do that? Ah, oh, did I spend points on the ammo before I spent on the... Ah, oh, did I do that the wrong way? Did I just spend a bunch of points I didn't need to? Well, that would have been nice to know. I just worked my way down from top to... Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's fine. I'll get those points back in three hours anyway when I do another research. Anyway, the point is, the entire upgrade tree now is available to us. We've done it. Um, I don't really think there's anything left for me to... I can make durable heavy armor now. I mean, I looted one the other day. Now I can make the damn things. It's pretty good. So we got progenitor research, which requires a thousand unlock points. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh my god. Right, okay. Uh, we want to go into voidium first. We, no, I'm not too worried about the armor. Augmented light armor. Um, yeah, okay, but whatever. Uh, so we want to go into voidium first. And then we're going to go into um, plasma and antimatter. I can't wait and to see what he does with legacy research. I really can't wait to see what comes out there. 
legacy i hope we get like disruptor cannons that run on power like like the beam lasers or something i don't know anyway uh the point is we will be going into avoiding research and that is 500 points so we can just something like that now and then that's a thousand points we can get a volume scanner for one and that's one and that's one okay we get a thousand points next time we get a thousand points uh we need to unlock that one and then and then that will be the volume drill now the volume drill obviously that takes our uh our, our epic uh laser drill that we've already got the advanced volume scanner progenitor technology fragments a hundred of them ah god oh, it's so painful oh right i i will show you that grind Oh my god, the grind is real. Right, we'll show you that grind, although part of it, because I'm not going to make you guys sit through all of it, uh, very soon. So, progenitor technology fragments, for those of you who do not know, may be wondering where the hell do you get those things, because they do not appear in any loot anywhere. Where the hell am I? Right, there I am. Okay. So I've been waffling on about it over the course of several episodes, but that little star cluster up there, if you turn the territory down, is like a, like a little cyan-y green colour. Um, and that is and that is progenitor space over there. Now, we went through all core worlds and turned on the core gates ages ago now. Um, and this sector here, it has a little stargate thing that you can use in order to get... <sighs> Come on. Over here. Here it is. And that is 350 light years. Hang on, if I select you, and then I can't actually, if I hover over you, I think there's a 350 light year gap, so there's no way you can warp there uh, without like an antimatter drive anyway. So, there we go, you need to use the Stargate to get over here, which means you can't take a ship over here, which means you need to spawn one in, then bring all the materials over to load one up. Fortunately, there are plenty of resources over here, so you could just bring enough uh, pentaxid and fuel over to go and mine the stuff and then do everything else yourself just be careful not to run into any bad guys uh, or a dyson sphere you will get blown up anyway once you're over here this is where you can find technology fragments and we will do that uh i need to again call in uh my friends in the iwc to help me with that anyway we're not doing that today that's not about this that's not what this episode is about what this episode is about is just the general grind of reforged eden uh and what it is what it requires to just keep going in this mod <laughs> but you think you're at the end you're not you're nowhere near the end anyway right so i have traded a bunch of the data pads and stuff that i have but i have this entire container full of other stuff to do we want to go and do these shards as well we need to go back to the crystalline moon to cleanse that and see what happens then all these undelivered cargoes all these trades goods so next up to uh somewhere to go and trade stuff basically there we go, trying to try and get rid of as much of this stuff as possible. I also have... Where is it? There it is. About a thousand booze to get rid of somehow. <laughs> Anybody want to buy some booze? Anybody want to buy some booze? Uh, while I'm here as well though, let's see. I think this guy has some. Uh, we need this. We need... Oh, uh, not, not filters, sorry. Fertilizers at 360 each. Now we need those fertilizers because... Uh, back when we unlocked these hydroponic bays. In order to build these bastards, uh, requires fertilizers, uh, which require hydroponic bay. There we go. Nine fertilizers per plot. Hmm. I can't remember. And, and also nine hydroponic units. Damn. Okay. They're expensive, basically. They're expensive, but they're worth it. So we need all... That's 10. That's 10 plots right there. I'm going to buy all 90. Um, I probably need to connect to something, though. So bear with there, Mr. Sir Person, to Sue Dude Sir Person. Um, here to shop again. I know, I keep coming away and coming back, don't I? Such a pain in the ass. That's 32,000 credits there. Um, bingo. We got 90 fertilizers. So while I go around and try and find someone to buy all my junk, um, I do need to buy fertilizers in order to build those lots. Okay, let's see, uh, let's see how much I can sell. Well, that's a bit better, isn't it? Now, Gerald, do you think you can stay on the ship for five minutes while I go and see what the nice Polaris people have for sale? Yep. Yeah. a boy. Thanks. Jane, if he moves, shoot him. More for fertilizers. Excellent. Uh, got excited then, but no, he... I can buy raw diamonds off of him as well. A bit expensive, but, uh, you know, we need more diamonds for uh, laser beam turrets. Get them from this guy. Uh, coolant and chemicals and all this stuff as well if it's ever needed I'm assuming it is at some point um, so kind of useful I guess this guy also um, had some fertilizer I, I bought them all <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> I bought them all. <laughs> Never mind. He also buys toxic waste. Oh, hey, right. You buy it for 400. You sell it for 413. Well, that's that sucks. You, you guys suck. Oh, a distress call. Always time to check out a distress call, especially from our friends at the UCH. Hello, hello, hello. What do we have here then? We have a standard UCH ship which looks. Ooh. Looks a bit blown up, guys. Like it may have taken a few hits. Right, hang on. Um, I've got an EVA boost on, but I don't think I have an option. I think I have to stick with EVA. Because uh, I don't think this thing's going to be pressurized on the inside. Nay. It is not. Oh, uh, I hear Zaraxian scumbags. Hold up. I see Zaraxian scumbags. Oh, yeah. Look at these. Oh, you think you can just uh, steal a UCH ship, do you? Well, you underestimate my powers to loot, my friends. They may be a ship in distress. <laughs> I can still take their stuff. <laughs> Ooh, a burger. Nice! Chop that pie in the fridge for later. Mm -mm -mm. Right, and someone's going to look upstairs. Need to find the bridge. Very comfortable and sense. Oh! Little spawny bastards. All right, that happened. I'm fine. Nothing to see here. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. All okay now. Oh, I'm out of gravity. <laughs> Never mind. Right, what else we got? Bathrooms. Yes, of course. Of course. Of course. Elevator up to the exit rear of the ship. Okay, let's go to the other end of the ship then and clear them out of there. Jump back across here. I hear more Zeraxian scumbags. Shotgun Zerax are down. Ammunition I will take. Not that it did the UCH much good. Hi! Oh, you gave me a poster. Foreign Worlds poster. Nice. I'm going to eat your sandwich as well. I'm not even hungry and I'm going to eat your... S oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Good job you're indestructible. <laughs> nice armor. Uh, hi. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hey. Um... Literally, is it? Can I not do anything here? Uh, or maybe. Hello? I've killed all the Xerax for you. Can I get. Like. <laughs> this is cool. This is like properly floating. You got one of these new anti grav units or something. Uh, I thought I could talk to someone up here and, and get some kind of like, you know. Congratulations. Thanks for clearing out the Xerax here. Uh, I guess not. I thought I'd get a bounty at least for the uh, Xerax commander. Oh. Boo! Yeah. Oh well. Never mind. Um, well, thanks guys. You can take the ship back now. Good luck getting home or whatever. See ya, I guess. That sucks. Is there anything up there? I don't, I don't know. Let me check it out. There's, there is that other floor, but I, I can't imagine that there's anything there because it's past the guards. So, I mean, there's always Pentaxid. There is always the Pentaxid in these. I'll take those. I'll relieve you of the Pentaxid. Thank you very much, UCH scumbags. I mean, friends! Damn it. Uh, yeah, that seems to be it. Okay, never mind. Well, that was kind of uh, anticlimactic. I thought we'd get like, at least like a little bounty thing, but there we go. And this guy. But nay! Just a poster. He sucks. 
Okay, moving on. Okay, I've done as much trading as I could be bothered to do right now. There's some things that I just cannot find traders for in this area, I think. Ooh, steady on sunshine. Let's just uh, let's just park there. So I figure let's come to one of the many crystalline moons that surround my base and deal with the uh, all the shards of the sun, the moon, the star, and all the other bits and pieces in between. Oh, hello. There's some low gravity. I love that. Right. You, you, and you. All in my inventory, please. Thank you. Let's talk to this dude. Hi! You carry a relic of our past on you. Ah. I may have an issue. I may have an oxygen-related issue right now. <laughs> please cleanse my relic. <laughs> please wait a minute. Speak to me once again. The lights have faded. Thank you. I shall wait for you to finish discoing. Disco, 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 disco. Oots, 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 oots. Ancient talon ritual. Uh, of, you know, disco. Look at it go. He's absolutely... I'm going to have a bath. I haven't had a bath in ages. I wish I could crouch. I could then properly wash myself. Never mind. Oh, well. Eliam, please add baths. Thanks. Showers of, uh, uh, you know. Hey, what's up, man? The ritual is complete. Hand over the corrupted shard of the stars, and I will have it cleansed. Hand over the corrupted shard. This shard is just one part of three. Find the other two, and you may be able to combine them. Um... I want to ask you something else. Want the what? Oh, not today. Thanks. Goodbye. Right. Um, I have all three now. What do I do? <laughs> story mission. Story mission. Story mission. Story mission. Uh, okay. So that is... I think this is as far as I got last time. Once I had all three in my inventory, nothing then happened. Yeah. Hi. No. Okay. Um... Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> Rivian, please finish. <laughs> uh, I think. Well, I mean, you know, this is. I think this is as far as we got last uh, Project Eden version. So uh, he hasn't done any more work on it, which is a shame because I'm looking forward to that one. It's all about the Imperion shrines and stuff like that. So I'm sure he's probably looking at actually what the hell, um, you know, he's he's committed himself to here. So. <laughs> before he continues that mission any further. Like, okay, so you combine all the three relics into one relic, which acts as a key, presumably, to an Imperion Shrine. You go to the Imperion Shrine, and then you win. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, the point is, we have all three pieces now. Yay. Um, let me just put them back, just in case they do something. They do not. Okay, good. All right. Well, there we go. That was, that was great. This is uh, all the stuff left over from my attempt at selling. Can't find anyone to buy that. Can't find anyone to buy these <laughs> or these or anything, basically. Uh, I know where to sell these, but that's all the way back at the starting area, unless I can find another trade station on a planet somewhere with a with a, um, a dodgy trader in it that buys all the Xerax stuff. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's We're talking pennies at the moment. Okay, so we're on Aeon Moon. We're back in our home sector. Um, right, next up then, we've got to go and, and deal with all our auto miners. We have three more auto mining devices from where we took on those POIs. We've got a few more auto miner cores. And we're going to place these down on the same moon that I've got the magnesium on. So that is aluminium. So we still need to put auto miners down on um, titanium and cobalt. I'm going to pick up what we've got on this moon so far and then we're going to see if we can find those. The other barren moon in this system has got the cobalt deposit. Now, as for uh, may, uh, sorry, neodymium um, and titanium, there are no deposits in this system of either of those. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to look for those if we want to auto mine them. Um, whether a field, we have to have a look maybe at another close by system, like an M class, which will have maybe ice moons or something that will have uh this is a really bad example <laughs> this is a terrible example <laughs> uh, i thought m class always certainly will have uh snow planets in them and they have generally got titanium i don't know whether that's that's a barren melt okay well i'm gonna have to have a little look for those a little bit more around here maybe I, yeah i, I want to put them in teleport range so they need to be within 30 light years of my current system and, um, yeah, I think they need to have freaking titanium and neodymium on them. Neodymium. Whatever. 
those are the last two. If uh, if I can't find them in um, deposit form, then I will just have to mine them. Asteroid mine them, basically. So it's no big deal either way. Anyway, uh, let's go down onto the lava planet and pick up the auto miners that I've already placed down there. See how many resources we got from those. Well, there we go. That is all of the stuff we picked up from one round of auto miners. So let's get this back to base. Get this all into the furnaces. Get them working on that. Now I've got to organize all this uh, output into various boxes. And while the furnaces are working on that, I've got a constructor working almost exclusively on cutting diamonds because that takes so long. I've got this guy working on a bunch of bridges and matrices. Uh, this guy should be working on fuel cells after a big lag spike. Thank you very much, game. And I think this guy is as well. So we are actually, we've got a hell of a production line going on here with all the ice and stuff that IWC has collected. This is turning into a, a nice, tidy amount of fusion cells to keep us going. Uh, those two constructors working on that. Now there is ammo production constructors over here. Actually, I think these are now idle. Yes, but they were working on um, missiles and stuff for the Ayamara, which at the moment is not required. So I'm just sort of building up things like magnesium and whatnot in the ammo input box, which is nice. And on the other side is the deconstructors, which are currently working on all of this stuff. I'm hoping they can deconstruct these mechanical components into iron. Well, I could just chuck that in the factory in fairness. Um, and then there's a couple of large constructors over there just not do, really doing anything at the moment. So we do actually need, uh, there are 58 sets of grow plots here. So times that by nine. <laughs> and that's how many uh, freaking uh, hydroponic pods we need. I can't remember which side of the station is the uh, blocks constructors. General, nope, other side. Damn it, of course I'd get it wrong. But yeah, uh, 58 times 9. That's how many hydroponic blocks we need. God damn, that's a lot. But obviously some of these, or most of these, because you need to, con to, to convert. Uh, let me see, base. I don't know if this constructor can do it. I assume it can't. No, I don't think it can, but it can at least make the steel hydroponic units, because we need for each hydroponic bay nine steel units so yeah we need 58 we got we got space for 58 hydroponic bays that's a whopping 522 hydroponic units uh we only have 343 nutrient solution uh but i think we we should be able to make more uh meds input where are you there you are got a thousand spoiled food in there uh, so let's have a little look let's get you going first of all on as many steel row plots as you can manage steel units all right just just make what was it 342 get that going all right that's going to take you a while and then we need a food processor so how much nutrient solution can you make? You require stone dust, purified water, and spoiled food. Five. You can make 210 nutrient solutions. So get going on that, please. And output that to the input box. There we go. Okay. And meds input will need to be topped up with water and crushed stone. Crushed stone and water. Fill to the brim as much as you can. All right. That's going to take a while as well, but hopefully that should be the 522 nutrient solution we need to start making some hydroponic bait. My god, these are expensive. In the meantime then, I'm putting resources towards the Zeus, uh, winner of our High G Lifter competition. Um, congratulations. Zeus looks like an interesting little beast, they must say. It is... I do wonder, because it's got huge platforms on the top of it, uh, it's kind of like a high G lifter slash carrier slash transport slash mobile base, and that's it's all here. Look. <laughs> anyway, we uh, require bridges of these sorts and matrices of these sorts. That should complete that one, but there we go. We got uh, matrices and bridges are done, but we still need a colonist dual light missile turret. 24 of the bastards. Uh, small modulated pulse laser of the gamma variety. No, th this is wrong. These weren't here before. I don't know where it's getting these from. Small undulated pulse laser is an SV weapon, not um, a CV weapon. So 
Uh, this I'm getting these weird bugs with the factory at the moment where it's sort of coming up. You remember with the AMR, I was saying it required these freaking um, EMP cruise missiles and stuff to be... Well, it has cruise missile launchers on it. But half the time, you could take it off and put it back on again, and um, it wouldn't need them anymore. So, Zeus, let's um, to factory that again and see if that changes the... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Takes the gamma, gamma and the colonist missiles off. How strange. How strange. So we still need Zaskunis Restroom and Cobalt. That's all fine. No problem. Silicon uh, requires a lot of that. 32,000. We're about halfway. And the iron requires 70,000 of which we're only 16,000. So Silicon and iron is going to take a little while to gather. But hopefully we can get that in. Uh, we just need to keep farming those auto miners really. Of course, we could speed up this whole thing just by going out and mining some iron manually. Load it all into the furnaces and wait for that to smelt down. In the meantime, we still need 522 grow plots. Um, oh, well, that's not very good, is it? What happened to all that then? Damn it, why is the food processor on the other side of the station from this constructor? Oh well, okay, well you can get started at least on another 84 row plots. Hell, just make a hundred, there you go, we'll figure it out. Uh, let's see what the food constructor is saying. Oh, you're still making, I'm just being impatient. My apologies, Mr. Food Constructor. Well, in that case, actually, we can get this chap over here working on um, some of the hydroponic bays in that case. Uh, all I do need, what what do these require? Optical fibers, ventilators. Ventilators? Really? Fertilizers, aluminium foil, steel, and glass plate. Well, okay, I think the easiest thing to do is to just chuck the hydroponic units into the input box. Uh, so, uh, there you go, good sir. You can now make a bunch of those. Just make as many as you can. <laughs> it's not going to make 200. <laughs> Actually, I better just reduce that to sort of, you know, around the rough figure that we actually wanted. And, uh, yeah, good luck. Good. Oh, don't put it in input, though. Put it in um, put it in blocks. There's lots of space there. Okay, so there we go. We're making some hydroponic units. Now, once we have the hydroponic units, we then need to work them into uh, the various types of hydroponic units we actually want to build. Starting with, say, vegetables here, which requires nine pumpkin sprouts just to make one of the buggers. <sighs> okay, well, we're going to have to make some sprouts then in that case, aren't we? Okie dokie. Um, all right. So if I want ten vegetable plots, I'm going to need 90 pumpkin seeds. Ouch. Oh well, while well, that's working on that, how's our furnace doing? Looking pretty good actually, looking pretty good. Look at these stacks of iron. And, and if we're lucky, come on, come on, one, hells yes, nice. Wait, what? Ah, oh, for crying out loud with the colonists and the small, no, no, they are not a thing in this blueprint. Stop that, two factory. There we go. That's better. Start production. Thank you very much. And... Ooh, voila! The Zeus, ladies and gentlemen. She is in. Oh my god. This thing is like flying a space station. <laughs> the Zeus here is by Movado. So congratulations, Movado, for getting this, uh, this papa voted in. Uh, it's an absolute monster, isn't it? Is <laughs> it is a monster. It does not look like a ship. It actually looks like a space station. Uh, but, I mean, I read the description on this thing and it is geared up. Look at the level of detail and texturing he's done on the underside here. This is absolutely amazing. That is excellent. Excellent quality uh, and attention to detail there. Love that. Very, very nice. Um, looks like... <laughs> It looks like my vulture, but like hulkified. <laughs> a hulkified vulture. This is uh Right, hang on. Let me see if I can. Now oh, the power is on. Um, so it's obviously not enough juice from the solar panels to keep it running. Not much uh, on the way of signal logic going on over here. Uh, so I might need to figure that out. Say if we turn all the constructors off, for example, and the thrusters off, it might actually get enough juice from the solar panels to do something. He says. Maybe not. 
Okay. Well, maybe we need to put some fuel in it then. No big deal. We have been manufacturing a bucket ton of uh, fusion cells, so let's chuck that in there. Yellow uh, fuel cells. There we go. 5,000. Yeah, it takes 500. Lovely. Okay, the power is on. The power is on. Look at the, the solar panels around this thing. <laughs> oh my god, yes! That's what we're talking about. Big stupid thrusters of thrustiness. Oh my lord, okay. Hang on, I haven't been on top yet. Before we go inside, we've got to have a little proper look around on the outside. Nice. The windows and stuff. And there we go. There's the top of this... Uh, boy, there's a whole greenhouse thing going on over here. Holy crap. Look at these landing pads. It's like that space station. The Sierra station there. But with thrusters. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's a monster. Okay, and it's got a hangar bay in the back there. So not everything is on the top deck. Uh, landing ramp, uh, or boarding ramp, and a hangar bay. Do you know what this means as well? This means we've finally got somewhere to spawn. Uh, a tank our tank into oh yes here we go lovely now the ODF M1A19 tank here is by scuba Steve and we'll have a look around that in a second let me just quickly IWC both of these up one quick second because oh just no let's see if we can dock this one there we go right I do I didn't want to um, leave it undocked for much longer okay Let's carry on having a look around uh, the Zeus here before we have a look around that tank. Oh my. Oh, he's gone LCD crazy. <laughs> we got some container controllers at the 320 KSU level. Uh, I might have to turn signals off to shut that hangar door up. Um, but we got some basic storage boxes, shower armor lockers, some O2 stations and med stuff, which is perfect for somewhere you're going to be embarking or... or Rebarking? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Going in and out of, let's say, in and out of uh, radiation zone. How much radiation is in the radiation zone? I love a radiation zone. That's brilliant. So, shield generator, gravity generator, warp dryer, pentaxid tank, all nicely tucked away in one radioactive room. I like. I like. Okay. And then we've got generators over here as well. This should be called the hot room. Uh, and it comes with a bunch of sort of little energy storagey things. Oh yeah, it's toasty in here. Kind of half expecting to find loot boxes at the end of that. I <laughs> don't know why. <laughs> anyway, let's carry on on this deck for a now. Let's see what else we got. Oh, production. Holy crap. This isn't just a high G lifter. This is an entire mobile base. And it does say in the description, this is kind of everything that I wanted from a, like, a mid-game ship. Look, he's managed to keep it within the 2.1 million. This is, this is pretty much everything I wanted from a mid-game CV, you know, the whole production, the mobile base thing. We're going to be traveling around a lot. Um, the AMR is very much the combat ship. Look at this freaking sick bay. <laughs> this is next level. Oh my god. Um, I would have thought that would look better in that little gap there, but there we go. Just, just my little toilets and a shower. Oh, yeah, the shower is... Um, glass back so everybody out the window can just <laughs> get privacy from the front but everybody in space can see your butt uh, a boarding ramp oh well that is just levels of cheekiness that is just levels of cheek look here's the bridge this is the bridge did you um, with side access shutter doors and safety rails wow I'm guessing that is so that you can stand at the edge here so if I stand here, I can turn that way and go, Droney, Droney, Drone. That's amazing. <laughs> Love it. Uh, we've got some passenger seats. We have some friends aboard. Okay. All right. This is this is a monster. What we got here? Uh, repair station, more armor lockers. High gravity mining. Safety mine anything, anywhere. Well, well, well. That doesn't look safe. <laughs> it looks anything but safe. Okay, I'm guessing that you lower this bit onto an auto miner and the auto miner pokes through the shield there. And here you can just obviously jump, either jump down or use a drone to go and mine stuff. And we've got all these little boxes everywhere for little bits and bobs. Mining hatch. Flip the switch uh, to open floor hatch. Use HV miner 
with drill tool pointed down to safely mine in any environment. Align the HV docking pads to dark blue shutter doors. Dock, undock to these shutter doors as needed. Alternatively, place the docking pad on the rear of the HV and dock to the railing. Oh! Well, cool. No, I mean, yeah, because on a planet, you can't use a CV mining turret because I, I don't know why. <laughs> just stupid reasons. <laughs> it's just like, hey, I've got this wonderful new drill turret that's really kind of expensive and stuff, uh, but I can only use it in space. Okay, well, yeah. Arbitrary rules aside, this is a way around that. You can dock a HV in here that has a a little mining. See, uh, but if it's docked, you can't fire it. So, huh? I don't quite understand that. Use the HV miner drill with the tool pointed down to safely mine in any environment. Align the docking pads to the dark blue shutter doors. Dock, undock to these shutter doors as needed. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand the whole docking and not docking and docking and not docking thing. Oh, these ones. Oh, not these ones. So you dock it. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I suppose that would stop it from falling out of the ship. If your docking pad were there, but it arched sort of over the railings a bit uh, and kind of like re rested, I suppose, you could open these up so it undocks but then doesn't redock to the ship so that you could use the mining laser out of that. Okay, I would need. I think I would need to see that in action to fully understand it, but I, I think I get it. I think I get it. Uh, we don't really have... I mean, I could build a HV that would work. I would have to build one, actually. I, I couldn't... There is no... Well, unless... Unless Mavado's done one specifically for that purpose. I don't have one that would fit that, that role. There are so many container controllers here. Look at this. All the storage, guys. All the storage. Um, A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, lots of fridges, jijijis, and... Well. <laughs> well, well, well. Hello there. Um, all the grow plots we can have. And... Ah, oh, swimming pool! <laughs> Hang on. Ladoosh. I'm swimming. Okay, I'm walking around. But, you know, you got to pretend these things. That's amazing. Who's got a CV with a freaking swimming pool in it? I do. That's who. That's amazing. <laughs> There's levels of RP I did not anticipate on this bad boy. Oh, my God. This thing is nuts, man. Absolutely nuts. I love it. Nice private quarters. Uh, I mean, the glass... Is tinted, but I can still see it through it. So anybody, can, you know, no bound chicka wow bow, yeah? That was a red room. Lots of lots of like little private quarters and stuff. Okay, let's go up again. Uh, floor deck five. Deck five, ladies and gents. Oh, hello. Hello there. And this is where all the quantums and uh, auxiliaries go. This is excellent. Excellent, I say. Because uh, I will be slapping uh, the antimatter core in this bad boy, since it is going to be carrying my life. Uh, there's a mix of those. This room is available for flexible upgrades as you need. Well, well, well. It's got its own holodeck. <laughs> and to turn this into a squash court. <laughs> How's that upgrade? Uh, and then we go on the roof. Aha! Okay, I am excited, guys. I am well excited. Look, I reckon the Ayamara will park on the top of this quite nicely. Watch out for that gap. And that gap. Um, I think it might overhang a little bit, but I think it will sit on there quite nicely. And we've got then a smaller deck for smaller craft, such as the Far SV and stuff. Um, wow. Yeah. That's, that's an impressive build. I tell you, it is... It is fugly as sin. <laughs> it's so ugly. But it's beautiful at the same time because it's just so, so geared. Oh, it's heavily geared. Now, I don't know. This thing has no armor. It has, like, no armor, no survivability whatsoever. But, uh, you know, it'll have a shield. Uh, we'll protect it for as long as we need to get the hell out of the way, out, out of danger, you know? 
Uh, so it's fine. It's no big deal. Okay, so the uh, M1A19 tank then. Uh, by Scuba Steve. Thanks, Scuba Steve. Congratulations on having this voted for. This is, uh, this is, this is an engine. This is a powerful machine by the look of it. Uh, okay, so this thing is already just a little bit over CPU with its two... I'm guessing this is a sniper tank. Two artillery guns. We've got laser cannons at the top here. Railgun cannons down here. Lots of engines for reversing. Oh yeah, yeah, it's definitely a sniper tank. Plus we've got like room for more turrets if we can upgrade its CPU. So if we can get a small auxiliary core in this badger, uh, we can get some more CPU in there. Oh, I like this. Look at these, the little passenger seats tucked in there. That's, that's a very nice little uh touch that is and here's the pilot seat with everything we need from trauma station 02 even constructors okay um and a clone chamber oh yeah oh nice actually pretty damn tidy i gotta say can i get out now please uh it'll be interesting to see how this performs in on the field i must say because it is slightly under Powered, I suppose, from a weapons point of view. There's the shield, look. And Pentaxa tank in there. I like that little access hatch. There's not an equivalent one on the other side for anything else, so. But yeah, these little spots for upgrades. Lovely. I'm I'm guessing we can have a look at the stats page, actually. Forward 43 meters. Bear in mind top speed of a hover vessel is like 50 or something, so that's pretty damn decent acceleration. And then left, right, 33 and 29 uh, reverse. That's actually not bad at all. The yaw at 55 degrees is is good. That's a nice... I So, yeah, it's a good performer, I think. It is a good performer. Um, it's definitely... I've already been looking at it. I think it's definitely one way you don't want to be fighting for... Uh, beyond the shield capacity. <laughs> you know? Anyway, we will have an opportunity, I think, to test this out soon. We have now a dropship. We have a dropship, guys. Um, this is amazing. Right, this is going to take me a little while to get it all set up and configured and stuff. So we need... Um, it's got sentry guns and 15 mil turrets. No problem. We'll get them geared up. We'll get the oxygen on board. We'll get some pentaxid on board. I think the one thing I'm not going to be setting up for a while is probably the garden. Um, this is... Well, I mean, this would be an ideal ship to have the other side of Progenitor Space. You wouldn't need a space station. You'd just run this thing. Uh, and that would literally service every other ship <laughs> in the fleet, basically. It's a, it's a hell of a supply ship. It really is. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of... I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. So uh, let's have a quick look at the turrets, actually. Has it got any kind of drill... Drill turrets or anything? No, it doesn't. Um, okay. So I'm thinking I'm going to take the drill turret off. It's got two harvest controllers, you see, of the Ayamara and slap it on this badger. Because um, we've got the CPU. No, we don't. We like five less than 500 CPU remaining. Well, <laughs> going over a little bit is not a big deal. We can go over a little bit just to have a drill turret on this thing. I could take that off the Ayamara then. And uh, we can do our mining and refining and all that stuff and living in general on the Zeus here. Oh my god. Yeah, this this is a beast, guys. I did not expect this from um, a high gravity lifter uh, competition. But this thing can lift voidium and magmasite and stuff off of high G worlds as well. It has got... What is that? Is it four XL? Uh, drive thrusters, sorry. Four drive thrusters. It's actually less than I thought it would need, considering... Oh no, no, sorry. Six. My bad. I, uh, <laughs> I did see them out in the corner. Oh man, and it's got an upside down ice cream cone on it as well. Yep. That is an interesting beast. Gotta say. Oh no, and there's the space for the drill turret as well. Perfect. Why, uh, yeah, that is one interesting beast. So, uh, the Zeus and the uh, the tank, the M1A19 uh, by Scuba Steve. Links down below in the video description. If you want to check them out, give them a sub, give them a rate up. Uh, yeah, this... 
Uh, I'll, I'll wait to reserve judgment on the M1A19 until we see it in action and, and I figure out how to use it and stuff. But I definitely think the Zeus deserves some love. This thing is an incredible machine. Absolutely incredible. Wow. Okay. Uh, so uh, what I want to do now that we've got this beast is go down onto um, the crusted lava planet over here. See if there are any magma site deposits down there. I don't know if there are or not. Um... I've not been down there, so we're going to have a little look around anyway. It's only a 1.19G planet anyway, so it's not going to stretch the Zeus overly. Uh, but if we do find magma site down there, then uh, we will have the machine to, to lift up the planet. I'm sure the IMR could probably do it as well, but I do want to kind of reserve this monster for combat roles now, really, than just flying this thing around everywhere and doing everything with it. And uh, I can load the Rasp now onto the Zeus, and that will be kind of my mobile home. Uh, but yes, we need magma site. You need magma site in order to start producing the kind of high-level weapons uh, that we can then strap to the IMR and start taking on bigger, bigger badder threats and whatnot. Uh, because there is a, a Xerax uh, asteroid field over here that I do want to go over and check out at some point, as well as lots of other things. Okay, let's load up the Zeus then and uh, let's see what she can do. Uh, looks like we've run out of aluminium again. Um, that run out real quick actually while we're trying to make hydroponic bays so I've just combined everything I need to make the actual full bays uh, into one box here and we're going to see what we can make we want about 10 vegetable bays so we change this input to the hydrogen production box that I uh, sorry hydro bay production not hydrogen <laughs> Um, there we go. So that's opened up that a little bit more. So we want about 10 of these. Uh, so make 10 of those, please. And there we go. We're actually making our first hydroponic base. This is awesome. So we're going to need about, I don't know. Uh, I haven't done any kind of maths on this or whatever it is. I'm sure there is uh, a perfect amount out there to make of each one. But let's see how many we can make of those. Uh, fruit, wheat, and natural sweeteners. Uh, we're not going to be able to get anywhere without some spice as well, though, if we can do that. I don't know. What have, what have I got there? I've got way more than I've actually got. <laughs> so 10 of them, and then I've only got 12 left, so with fruit, um, I would just have to do as many as we can. We'll get the fruit and we'll get the wheat, but we won't get any of this, uh, the spice unless I do one and one like that. And then... Uh, We'll see what these look like once they're done. Okay, so now that we've got these, I think um, in order to place these things, they need to be placed on a actual grow bed. And then there we go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's it. We have our first vegetable hydroponic base. So I need to remove these, basically. Uh, and then place even <laughs> it's like four gravity generators working on it right here and then uh place a uh, hydroponic plot in each of those before i can place the bay it's all very confusing it's a hell of a lot of work as well but i do think they are worth it because there are nine um there are nine vegetables growing in each one of these and it only takes one click to harvest the full all, all of them uh, so, is that 10? 2, 4, 6, 8. I thought I built 10. Where's number 10? Somebody said 10 in the thing, didn't I? It's managed to produce the other ones, so I don't know. Ah, what's going on? Okay, well, I'll leave a space here for the 10th one, wherever that's gone missing to. Uh, anyway, <laughs> maybe I didn't have enough pumpkin seeds or something. Uh, right, so we got two fruits, three wheats, and um, a spice and a thing. We want to get them all kind of around here in various quantities. So we're going to have like five of one and, and so on and so forth. So uh, we could have a row here of the fruits. That would work. I think that's far too many fruits. I don't know. Like I said, um, I don't bother with actually calculating things. I don't bother with trying to figure things out, like, properly. Nah, 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 nah. I just place them, see what happens. Um, <laughs> which I realise. Pretty very frustrating for for you guys. But, uh, screw it. Anyway, that'll be... A, so this will be a fruit line, this will be a, a spice line. And then... 
Uh, we can have wheat along the back here. And so on and so forth. I think you get the ideas. There we go. But there we go. That is that's what um, hydroponic bays look like. They don't look like anything. You look like they just look like they're growing grass inside them, and they're all sort of misty and stuff. But uh, the whole glass distortion around them is quite cool. <laughs> I only my only wish is that they actually look like the crop that, that they say that's inside them. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, whatever, whatever. Anyway, um, right. Let's put the sweetener here. I say. So we've still got plenty of plots to build. Uh, one of the other things I want to do is uh, you can actually get plots for pentaxid crystal. Pentaxid crystal isn't difficult to go and harvest, obviously. It's kind of everywhere. But uh, I think having a supply of pentaxid crystal here, up here, would be great. But I will need the regular grow plots for these. What's going on with that? Look at that. It's all weird. <laughs> I've never seen that before. That's funny. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I might just take this entire floor out and turn it into a regular sort of grow plot farm, but for pentaxida, and because it's up and out of the way, it shouldn't, <laughs> trademark, <laughs> uh, affect the crops below or the other side of it. <laughs> With the gravity, somebody turn that down. Oh my god! Right. Okay, there is. Um, that's I think what we're gonna have to do uh, for the base for a while. I, I you just need to gather more hydroponics and, and whatnot and then that will hopefully be sorted into a fully grown and bustling beautiful garden in no time whatsoever uh in the meantime though the zeus should now be pretty much uh armed yes we have some gatling rounds there it has fuel it has uh, no oxygen uh right okay uh let's fill that up then bingo and it has pentaxid yes 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 and shields are charging. I have also labelled a number of boxes into useful sort of labels and stuff. Uh, although I need to do that for the fridge and that's fine. And um, a bunch of those are the boxes that I didn't have anything to do with at the moment. I just put Z in front of them so they appear at the bottom of the list there. As I have done on the, the base here. Now there are a few things that I do want to apply to the Zeus to ensure that it does feel very much like home. That is all in here. We need to go put some posters up. Oh yeah. I just thought of the purpose of this room. This room is available for flexible upgrades as you need. There's nothing more than having your own personal art gallery in your ship. That are uh, just, yeah, that's just wonderful. These posters are amazing, by the way, guys. They're such a good job on these. Uh, wish you were here. Somebody has donned my colors and uh, <laughs> put a span chat on there I love that very good um, let's have that one right at the end uh, very nice I argue with that that's fantastic and wanted dead or alive by order of far a bounty has been placed on dread pirate spanch outrageous <laughs> I'm friends with far this is an outrage unbelievable uh, okay well whatever you fine fine you yeah all right uh so i don't think i've got anything else i thought i saw that i had one more poster somewhere but maybe i don't maybe it's somewhere in one of these very many 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 ah there we go blocks blocks i got another poster i'm gonna basically collect posters in here and uh we're gonna have this as our, as our own personal gallery guys what do you think and uh once again i do want to say thank you very much to revian and everybody involved in the little poster contest <laughs> this is fantastic. Very, very cool. With that then, we are ready to go, I think. Shields are charging. Oxygen has filled the air. Lovely. Okay. First thing that we need to do is go and get some aluminium. Um, around here, that's this sector here. These are some aluminium asteroids. Um, turn my things back on so we can see where I'm going. There we go. Oh, we're off. Look at this thing. It's like a, it's like an RV. <laughs> it's like a massive RV. Look at this majestic brick gliding through space. <laughs> I have never flown a ship like that. I think the closest thing that comes to this is like the STO-3, which is pretty brick-like. Uh, it looks so weird. <laughs> I ain't gonna say it. This is a bit odd. I'll get used to it though. I'll get used to it. I can't deny 
its functionality, I tell you. Okay, so the last thing I want to do on today's episode is see if we can find some magma site just so I can see, show you guys where it sits. I'm seeing iron meteorites around here. That's weird. Huh. That's strange. Threshold for iron here must have been quite high. Anyway, uh, generally you find magma site deposits around lava, lava fields and they, I don't know if they appear as a resource or as a POI. I can't remember. So where you see these little uh, question marks dotted up, that could be magnesite if there is any on this planet. Or it might be a resource like we see down there. Other than looking pretty spectacular, I don't think there is any magnesite deposits down here. Which is a shame, because that means both of our lava planets are free from magnesite deposits. And we're going to have to go further afield and look for hell class planets. Um, but we have the vehicle to do just that now. So... Uh, no big deal. We've made a lot of progress today, regardless. And um, Magnesite is really kind of end game stuff. Is really going to enable us to have some of the big, bad weapons that we see in the upgrade tree now. There are a bucket ton of Xerax stuff down here, though. So um, when we are hungry for Xerax blood, and to put this tank, this brand new tank that we've got to uh, to work, I think I think we are coming down here. That's for sure. Anyway, the search for Magnesite continues, like I say, um, but uh, we run out of time today, unfortunately, to do that. So we'll have to wait until next time to have a look into that stuff. But thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed, and hopefully I will see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.